from Gulliver's Kingdom to Joyland Amusement Park. Here are your top 10 abandoned amusement parks you are prohibited from visiting. In our number 10 spot we have the Pripyat Amusement Park. Ever heard of a town called Pripyat? Well, I'd be surprised to hear that you haven't, as this is a very known town around the world as a very horrible disaster once occurred there. I am speaking of course of the Chernobyl plant explosion that took place in 1986. Well just before the explosion, Pripyat was planning on opening up an amusement park. The Pripyat Amusement Park. And the opening was scheduled for 5 days after the day that the explosion happened. Well as you can can imagine the explosion was so bad that the amusement park plans were turned upside down. The park owners opened the park for one day to try to distract everyone from the horrible disaster, but as you can imagine, as everyone fled, the park closed and never reopened. The Ferris wheel is still standing there today, and there are dark tours that go through the park and the abandoned town. In our number nine spot, we have Lake Shawnee Amusement Park. Lake Shawnee Amusement Park was located in West Virginia and it was open from 1926 till 1966. This park ended up closing because it began to hold a horrible reputation as a few killings happened on its grounds. One accidental, one seemingly not, and apparently others that haven't been confirmed, but nonetheless, this began to make visitors uncomfortable and so the park shut down. People believe it to be haunted by the ghosts of the young ones that passed away there, but also people believe that the land was cursed from the start as there was a quarrel between a First Nation tribe and a European settler once in this area. It had a brutal history from 1783 where the Shawnee Native American tribe ended up killing the offspring of the first man that made a home in their area named Mitchell Clay. But there is so much more to the story as apparently the park was built on a Native American burial ground and many young ones were buried there. People believe these ghosts could be haunting the park too, but in any case, no one can deny that the park, even today, feels haunted. In our number 8 spot we have Joyland Amusement Park. Located in Kansas, the Joyland Amusement Park was one of the biggest when it opened in 1949. 57 acres in fact. It was doing very well until a lot of ride related deaths started occurring. Then there was a massive scandal where an employee was killed by some people visiting the park and that caused a lot of unwanted press. Then an employee was injured by a roller coaster and finally Finally, someone fell off of a Ferris wheel in 2004. As you can imagine, all of these incidents led to lawsuits and eventually financial ruin for the park, where they then had to shut down. Apparently, the park was purchased in 2018 with plans to turn it into a concert venue slash wedding venue. But man, I hope they have had like 10 priests bless this ground first before they open it. In our number seven spot, we have Dreamland Park. The Dreamland Park was located in Pennsylvania and it opened in 1939. When this park opened, it didn't have too many attractions as you would imagine a typical amusement park to have. The park only had a roller rink, a band theater, a few rides, and a small car race track. And some picnic areas. In August of 1969 though, two people by the name of Marilyn Sheckler and Glenn Eckert were killed on the premise and that is where the park began to have a reputation for being associated with gangs, gambling and dark dealings. Another killing took place on the grounds in the 90s and that is what led to the published non-fiction novel about the park. In our number 6 spot we have the Magic Harbor Park. Here is another abandoned park with a dark history. Magic Harbor, located near Myrtle Beach, opened in 1954. In 1976, one of the owners and his son were fatally injured by an employee of the park which resulted in them both passing away. After this horrible incident, the wife of the park owner did not want to continue running the park so it went into foreclosure and the bank took over. It was eventually bought out again but in 1984, another tragedy happened where a young girl passed away after falling off a ride and the park was sued for $12 million. With its poor reputation and now horrible financial issues, the park eventually closed. In our number 5 spot we have Holy Land USA. This is an old Christian theme park as you may have deduced from the title. 
Holy Land. It opened in 1960 and apparently the theme park contained replicas of famous scenes from the Bible such as the Garden of Eden, the Last Supper, etc. A large cross was placed on a hill and a big sign with its name on it that is apparently hard to miss if you're driving along Interstate 84 in Waterbury, Connecticut. Apparently the park was a hit and a Baptist owned it. Makes sense. And he originally closed the park in the 80s to work on expanding it, but then he passed away. Nuns of the area were maintaining the grounds, but over the years, it got worse and worse due to vandalism and an unfortunate killing that took place under the cross. In our number four spot, we have Brandywine Springs. The Brandywine Springs Amusement Park opened in 1886 in Williamton, Delaware, and it was a good example of what you can imagine as good, clean fun. The park had a wooden Roller coaster, a train, restaurants, a castle, a castle house, and much more. The park was a hot spot until a tragedy occurred when an employee and another male was fatally injured, and this certainly changed the park for good. The park closed in 1923, around the time that cars became more available to the average person, which made it easier for people to travel, and then they would find new adventures elsewhere and not spend their time slash money at the park. Apparently, the park is in ruins at the moment, but there are plans to put up signs and photographs of where the major attractions once stood so that people that walk through it can learn a little about its history. Well, that's fun. Maybe you're not prohibited from visiting this one. In our number three spot, we have Kajonuma Leisure Land. Once a very popular amusement park in Japan, eventually it turned into something quite dark. It had all of the fun amusement park rides and was beloved by many, despite its ghost stories. Unlike many of the other parks here, the park only closed in 2000 due to a drop in visitors, which is believed to be the cause of Japan's declining birth rate and the economic crisis. However, there is a strange urban legend about the park that is still told today that has urban explorers wanting to visit the land. Apparently there is a lake by the park that is known to have a large snake population and as the legend goes, a pregnant woman who lived near there gave birth to a serpent baby who escaped into the water and every night the woman would hear the baby cry. It drove her mad and she ended up taking her own life in the lake and it was her ghost that people believed haunted the park. Dark. People have reported hearing her and her serpent babies cries. In our number two spot, we have Rocky Point Amusement Park. Rocky Point Amusement Park, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, opened in 1847 and didn't close till 1995. It had a long history of over 150 years of being active and it attracted a lot of very famous guests who performed there over the years. Some of the later guests you would know include Pat Benatar, the Ramones, and a personal fave of mine, the Red Hot Chili Pepper. It only had one killing on site ever recorded and it was in 1893 when a clinically insane man fatally injured his daughter. The park was so popular that eventually people forgot about the incident. This is one park that would honestly just be sad to visit because it seems like it was so cool. I don't wish sadness for you, so don't go and visit it. In our number one spot we have Gulliver's Kingdom. Gulliver's Kingdom, an amusement park in Japan that opened in 1997 near the base of Mount Fuji, is probably the creepiest park I have ever ever seen. I mean, the park was based off of a book called Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift, and so I bet the park wouldn't feel as creepy for people that have read the book. The park famously had a giant lying on its back, a picture that we can assume is taken from the book. The park existed for only about 10 years before it closed due to the park just not resonating with the people as the owners thought it would. Honestly, an idea like this feels too big for the 90s. People are way more open now creatively, so I bet it would be a hit these days. Instagram was invented a little too late. At this point, the park has been demolished, so it's no longer a site for urban explorers, but the pictures of this very chilling park will live on in our brains forever. I'm Melissa Malati, your host. Follow me on Insta or YouTube at Melissa Malati, and I hope you have a good day, sir.